morning and evening, maids heard the goblins cry. Come buy our orchard fruits. Come buy, come buy. Apples and quinces, lemons and oranges, plum unpecked cherries, melons and raspberries, bloom down cheeked peaches, swart headed mulberries, wild free born cranberries, crab apples, dewberries, pineapples, blackberries, apricots, strawberries, all ripe together in summer weather. Evening by evening, among the brookside rushes, Laura bowed her head to hear. Lizzie veiled her blushes. Lie close, Laura said, pricking up her golden head. We must not look at goblin men. We must not eat their fruits. Come by, called the goblin, hobbling down the glen. Oh, cried Lizzie. Laura, Laura, you should not peep at goblin men. Lizzie covered up her eyes, covered close lest they should look. Laura reared her glossy head and whispered like the restless brook. Look, Lizzie, look, Lizzie. Down the glen tramp little men. One hauls a basket, one bears a plate, one lugs a golden dish of many pounds weight. How fair the vine must grow, whose grapes are so luscious. No, said Lizzie, no, no, no. Their offers should not charm us. Their evil gifts would harm us. She thrust a dimpled finger in each ear, shut eyes and ran. Curious Laura chose to linger, wondering at each merchant man. One had a cat's face. One whisked a tail. One tramped at a rat's pace. One crawled like a snail. <sighs> when they reached where Laura was, they stood stock still upon the moss, leering at each other. Come by, come by, was still their cry. Laura stared but did not stir, longed but had no money. The whisk-tailed merchant bade her taste in tones as smooth as honey. The cat face purred. The rat face spoke a word. But sweet tooth Laura spoke in haste. Good folk, I have no coin to take where to purloin. I have no copper in my purse. I have no silver either. And all my gold is on the furs that shakes in windy weather above the rusty heather. You, you have, have much gold, gold upon your head, they answered all together. Buy from, from us with, with a, a golden, golden curl. curl. She clipped a precious golden lock. She dropped a tear more rare than pearl, then sucked their fruit globes fair or red. Sweeter than honey from the rock, stronger than man rejoicing wine. She never tasted such before. She sucked those fruits which that unknown orchard bore. She sucked until her lips were sore, then flung away the rinds, and knew not was it night or day as she turned home alone. Lizzie met her at the gate, full of wise upbraidings. Dear, you should not stay so late. Twilight is not good for maidens. Should not loiter in the glen, in the haunt of goblin men. Nay, hush, said Laura. Nay, hush, my sister. I ate and ate my fill, yet my mouth waters still. Tomorrow night, I will buy more. Then kissed her. Have done with sorrow. I'll bring you plums tomorrow, fresh on their mother twigs. Cherries worth getting. You cannot think what figs my teeth have met in. But melons, icy cold, piled on a dish of gold too huge for me to hold. Golden head by golden head, like two pigeons in one nest, folded in each other's wings. They lay down in their curtain bed, moon and stars gazed in on them. Wind sang to them lullaby, cheek to cheek, and breast to breast, locked together in one rest. <laughs> Early in the morning, when the first cock crowed his warning, neat as bees, as sweet and busy, Laura rose, with Lizzie, fetched in honey, milked the cows, aired and set to write the house, fed their poultry, sat and sewed, talked as modest maids should, Lizzie with an open heart, Laura in an absent dream, one content, one sick in heart, one warbling for the mere bright day's delight, one longing for the night. At length slow evening came, they went with pitchers to the reedy brook. Lizzie most placid in her look. Laura more like a leaping flame. They drew the gurgling water from its deep. Lizzie turning homeward said, the sunset flushes those furthest lofty crags. Come Laura, not another maiden lags. But Laura loitered still among the rushes and said the hour was early still. The dew not fallen, the wind not chill. Listening ever, but not catching the customary cry. Come by, come by. Still Lizzie urged, oh Laura, come. I hear the fruit call, but I dare not look. You should not loiter longer at this brook. The stars rise, the moon bends her arc. Let us home before the night grows dark. 
Laura turned cold as stone to find her sister heard the cry alone. Must she then buy no more such dainty fruit? Laura said not one word in her heart sore ache, but trudged home, not discerning. So crept to bed and lay silent till Lizzie slept and sat up in a passionate yearning and gnashed her teeth for balked desire and wept as if her heart would break. Day after day, night after night, Laura kept watching vain in sullen silence of exceeding pain. She never caught again the goblin cry. Come by, come by. She never spied the goblin men hawking their fruits along the glen. But when the moon waxed bright, her hair grew thin and gray. She dwindled to swift decay and no more swept the house, tended the hens or cows, fetched honey, kneaded cakes of wheat, brought water from the brook and sat down listless in the chimney nook and would not eat. Tender Lizzie could not bear to watch her sister's cankerous care, yet not to share. She night and morning caught the goblin's cry. Come by our orchard fruits. Come by, come by. Beside the brook, along the glen, she heard the tramp of goblin men. The voice and stir poor Laura could not hear. Longed to buy fruit to comfort her, but feared to pay too dear. Till Laura dwindling seemed knocking at death's door. Then Lizzie weighed no more but put a silver penny in her purse, kissed Laura, crossed the heath at twilight, halted by the brook, and for the first time in her life, began to listen and look. Laughed every goblin when they spied her peeping, came towards her hobbling, flying, running, leaping, cat-like, and rat-like, radle, and wombat-like, held her skelter, hurry scurry, hugged her and kissed her, squeezed and caressed her, stretched up their dishes, panniers and plates, look at our apples, bob at our cherries, bite at our peaches, citrons and dates, grapes for the asking, pears red with basking, plums on their twigs, pomegranates, figs. Good folk, said Lizzie, give me much and many. Held out her apron, tossed them her penny. Nay, take a seat with us, honor and eat with us. Thank you, said Lizzie, but one waits at home alone for me. So without further parleying, if you will not sell me any of your fruits, though much and many, give me back my silver penny. I tossed you for a fee. It began to scratch her pates, <sighs> no longer wagging, purring, but visibly demurring, grunting, snarling, <sighs> their tones waxing loud. Their looks were evil. They trod and hustled her, elbowed and jostled her. Barking, mewing, hissing, mocking, tore her gown, and soiled her stocking, held her hand, and squeezed their fruit against her mouth to make her eat. White and golden, Lizzie stood, like a lily in a flood, like a rock of blue veins stoned, lashed by tides obstreperously, like a beacon left alone in a hoary, roaring sea, sending up a golden fire. One may lead a horse to water. Twenty cannot make him drink. Though the goblins cuffed and caught her, coaxed and fought her, bullied and besought her, scratched her, pinched her black as ink, kicked and knocked her, mauled and mocked her, Lizzie uttered not one word, would not open lip from lip, lest they should cram a mouthful in. At last the evil people, worn out by her resistance, flung back her penny, kicked their fruit, Along whichever road they took, some writhed into the ground, some dived into the brook, some vanished in the distance. In a smart, ache, tingle, Lizzie went her way, knew not was it night or day. Sprang up the bank, tore through the firs, she ran and ran as if she feared some goblin man dogged her with jibe or curse or something worse. She cried, Laura, up the garden, did you miss me? Come and kiss me. Never mind my bruises. Hug me, kiss me, suck my juices, squeeze from goblin fruits for you. Goblin pulp and goblin dew. For your sake, I have braved the glen and had to do with goblin merchant men. Laura started from her chair, flung her arms up in the air, clutched her hair. Lizzie, Lizzie, have you tasted for my sake the fruit forbidden? Must your light like mine be hidden? Undone in my undoing and ruined in my ruin? Thirsty, cankered, goblin ridden? She clung about her sister, shaking with anguish, fear, and pain, and kissed her and kissed her with a hungry mouth. Her lips began to scorch. That juice was wormwood to her tongue. She loathed the feast, writhing as one possessed. She rent all her robes and wrung her hands in lamentable haste, 
Her locks streamed like a torch, borne by a racer at full speed, or like the mane of horses in their flight, or like an eagle when she stems the light straight toward the sun, or like a caged thing freed. Swift fire spread through her veins, knocked at her heart, met the fire smoldering there, and overbore its lesser flame. She fell at last. Pleasure passed, and anguish passed. Is it life or is it death? Life out of death. That night long, Lizzie watched by her, counted her pulses flagging stir, <laughs> felt for her breath, held water to her lips and cooled her face. But when the first birds chirped in their eaves and new buds with new day opened of cup-like lilies on the stream. Laura awoke as from a dream. Laughed in the innocent old way. <laughs> Hugged her sister not twice, but thrice. <laughs> her gleaming locks showed not one thread of gray. Her breath was sweet as May. And light danced in her eyes. Days, weeks, months, years afterwards, afterwards, when both were wives with children of their own, Laura would call the little ones and tell them of her early prime. Would talk about the haunted glen, the wicked, quaint fruit merchant men, their fruits like honey in the throat, but poison in the blood, would tell them how her sister stood in deadly peril to do her good and win the fiery antidote. Then joining hands, the little hands would bid them cling together. For there is no friend like a sister in calm or stormy weather to cheer one on the tedious way, to fetch one if one goes astray, to lift one if one totters down, to strengthen whilst one stands.